Judges are ready. Timer. Vast audience. Okay. We'll begin. Roger had a strange effect on people. Take this guy, for example. His name is Tom. Tom has been grumpy since he got out of bed this morning. Pay no attention to him. He's just a minor character here to illustrate a point, and then we'll leave him forever in a second. So, here's our guy, trekking through the forever forest, when all of a sudden, for absolutely no reason, the frown leaves his face. And then he treks a little bit more, and for no reason, he begins to smile. He treks more, and for absolutely no reason, he breaks out into a grin. <laughs> now, a voice said, for no reason, there actually is a reason. And the reason is that Roger was trekking towards him in the opposite direction. This is the effect that Roger had on people. He made them feel good. Okay, Tom, you can leave now. Okay. You can leave. He's not leaving. He's just laughing. Can someone... I guess he's a character now. This is our book. I am the author. We, we came up with a title that I am proud of. A barrel of laughs, a veil of tears. Because it sounds like poetry. Which is good. And it isn't. <laughs> Which is better. <laughs> we made up all the characters, including Jack, who calls himself Tom. And that, I must admit, really frustrates me. But anyways, we just had to take this short break to complain. Don't worry, we're still mostly in charge of the story. And it should go... Pretty much as we planned. But do be careful about this, Tom. A Barrel of Laughs, A Veil of Tears by Jules Pfeiffer. Chapter One, The Beginning, The Forever Forest. Have you ever done something with no intention of hurting someone and then found out that that person has now become your mortal enemy bent on your destruction? Roger has. When Roger entered the Forever Forest, he was certain that he could cheerfully dash through. A year later, he was still certain that it wouldn't take long. But the further he trekked, the more lost he got. And now here's Jack. <clears throat> Tom? He calls himself Tom. And he comes into the story, and at first he won't leave, but then he meets Roger, and they become best friends. I know that because I planned it that way. They sat on the bank of a brook, trying to think of a way out of the Forever Forest. We should think of a plan. Why do we need a plan? A plan to get us out of here. <laughs> this is the Forever Forest, Roger. We are in here forever. Oh, uh, what am I going to do? I know. What? You have to make a decision, Robert. A decision? But I've never made a decision. There is always a first time. Well, how do you go about making a decision? You just, okay. You put together all of the... You think this way and that. Make a list. <laughs> Weigh the alternatives. <laughs> I'm a peasant! I never had to make a decision, okay? Well, what if I make one and it's the wrong decision? I'm not an expert, but my guess would be that if a decision doesn't work out, my guess would be that you have to make another decision. A second decision! <laughs> I'm not an expert, but I think you just have to keep on making decisions until you come up with one that works. That could take years! Another reason why I don't make them. Well, what if I just didn't make a decision? This is the forever forest, Roger. We're in here forever. <laughs> After a week of thinking and getting nowhere, Roger decided that he had to get somewhere. And that somewhere was out of the forever forest. Roger decided that in order to make this decision, he would need to do it alone. So he drafted up a letter to Tom, left it for him, and headed on his way. But why didn't he just... Take me with him! <laughs> Roger sat on the bank of a brook, trying to think of a way out of the forever forest. He tried. <laughs> he really tried for a <laughs> But all he could come up with was how silly his toes looked underwater. <laughs> if the toes on his feet were in the opposite order, would he walk in reverse? He wondered about that. He then wondered. <laughs> If he 
were to walk in reverse, would it be possible that I could back out of the forever forest? <laughs> he took his feet out of the water. He took a step back. Then a second step. Then a third! <laughs> he was tempted to look behind him to see where he was going, but then he made a second decision, which was... DON'T! <laughs> After the fifth day of backing out of the forever forest, he looked at the ground, and it was no longer grass, it was rock! Yeah! <laughs> the sun beat mercilessly upon him! And this he was not used to, for he had been in the shade for three years. Roger had backed into the middle of... Nowhere. What a joke. I backed from the forever forest to the forever rock. <laughs> Nothing was there to be seen. Nothing. Not a castle. Not a hut. Not a tree. Not a bush. Not a bird. Nothing. Just rocks. And more rocks. Except for Tom, who had found his way out of the forest by following Roger. <laughs> Chapter 2. The Middle. Tom returns. Tom was changed. I warned you guys about Tom. I told you he was not to be trusted. He was different. The newly rediscovered Tom was cruel. He behaved like a rat. I'm going to get even. Oh, uh, why? You left me in the forever forest. You could have taken me with you, but you didn't. You left me flat, and I am going to get even. Um, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean Someday, to... in some way, I will get even. I really didn't mean to leave you like that. Someday, <laughs> when you are asleep, when your back is turned, I will get even. Chapter 3. Nearing the end. <laughs> Roger lives in fear of Tom's return. <laughs> Chapter 4. The end. The duel. Roger woke to the distant sound of Tom. I am going to get even. Tom was coming closer. I am coming closer. Tom was nearly upon him. I am nearly upon... I am nearly upon him. <laughs> Heroes back in those days often told their opponents more about themselves than you'd want to tell your best friend. What their father does, what they had for dinner, how their life has ended, different things like that. Except for maybe what they did on their summer vacation. Roger and Tom weren't called on to do this because they had been best friends before they became worst enemies. So they just stood dumbly exchanging stares. <laughs> <laughs> Were you ever really my friend? I wasn't the one who deserted you! I am going to get even by cutting off your right arm and your left leg so that you have to spend the rest of your life off balance! <laughs> Mr. Narrator, 
What? <laughs> you nearly killed me! <laughs> the best thing that ever happened to you. Roger <laughs> couldn't believe his ears and, and would not speak anymore. <laughs> Roger decided that there might be a hundred, a dozen more quests out there to be found. And, well, Natalie realized because there is no more to the story. He 